Could a president order SEAL Team 6 to assassinate a political rival? Good people of the interweb, this is going to be a weird one today, and one that I don't think any of us are ready for. I know I certainly <laughs> never could have seen this video coming. Uh, I apologize for having to make this video um, to you know any of my returning viewers who were expecting something else, and uh, I know the majority of the people on that are going to be watching this video are probably going to be new viewers based off of the title. Uh, understandably and I, I want to welcome you to the channel and I hope that everybody returning viewers and new viewers will watch this video in good faith with an open mind and critical thinking skills because we're all adults and we all have those capabilities and I, be I, I believe in you or at least I, I want to I, I try to stay away from political topics I try to stay away from political videos and keep this entertaining it, yes I know I have some firearm content sometimes and I know that's controversial uh, given you know most of you know my affiliation and viewership I know a lot, most people are left-leaning a lot or anti gun and you know it's it's a very nuanced topic I get it um, and we, we're gonna address that in the future in a very educational way and I hope hopefully you all will come back for that and watch it with again an open mind and critical thinking and rather than coming at it from the perspective of ew you know why do you like guns maybe from the perspective of I now understand why you like guns I understand the reasoning and necessity that a lot of people do have guns maybe they're not for me but I respect your right to have one you know that's that's the, the end goal and maybe hopefully to get some people um, on the you know anti-gun side of the spectrum to maybe go shooting with me and learn some intricacies about gun safety, gun laws, how to operate a firearm, things of that nature. I was about to say we're getting away from the point, but this this does correlate. Um, so as someone who is a uh, supporter of the Second Amendment and does believe in the right to own firearms, I do watch a lot of firearm related content on YouTube. I watch a lot of, uh, you know, pro 2a channels a lot of gun review channels a lot of uh you know gun reaction channels and because of that a lot of channels get suggested to me and sometimes it's a lot of really really hard right wing channels and sometimes i you know i do watch some of them and again i try to do so with an open mind to try to understand uh certain perspectives on topics that are nuanced and aren't as you know black or white and i don't mean that racially i mean like you know there's a lot of gray area Reg registered wise I i'm not affiliated with either party given you know my, my friends and family and everything else we consider myself to be more left-leaning on a social scale because i do have um a lot of friends that are of non-white races um you know people of color and i do have a lot of friends who are members of the lgbtq plus community and i respect all of them as humans and individuals and i i, I hate vehemently the fact that as a nation we are so incredibly politically divided right now and a lot of it is based on social things of this nature and the way and and both sides i'm going to say uh go out of their way to dehumanize one another and it's it, it's it 
it's very frustrating. So today, y'all are going to learn how and why I am the moral misanthrope and where that originated from. So in 2016, when, you know, that election happened and, you know, we had Hillary and Trump, um, you know, before Hillary, we, we had Bernie in the running and I, I'm not sure what happened there. I can only speculate. I'm sure it's something f nefarious and also pardon my language. So that being said, uh, you know, in 2016, um, I had just left a metal band and I had started a metal solo project called Samarina. Well, we also had the election happening and I was seeing the absolute worst from humanity on both sides and uh, there was a lot of fear, there was a lot of misinformation, there was just a lot of horrible things happening in the world and it was a scary time. And I know a lot of my friends were scared, I know a lot of my friends were angry. It, it, was, it, was, it was a bad time. But so, one of the songs that I wrote for my Samaranoc DP, uh, it was called Moral Misanthropy. And it came from the standpoint of, you know, everyone w was online just saying, and, and in the real world, everybody, people were saying the most heinous, immorally reprehensible, just violent, crude, offensive things to one another because of their political beliefs. And I was seeing the absolute worst in humanity. Even everybody was coming at it from a place of moral superiority, you know, on either side. Everybody thought they were in the right, and um, you know, it just it, it was disheartening to see our country, in my opinion, falling apart from that point. And. Um, it, it wasn't too long after that that I decided that, you know, I, I wanted to do, wanted to take my YouTube channel seriously and I rebranded and I kind of, I kind of leaned in on that, on that song that I wrote, Moral Misanthropy, um, because like, I, I feel like I became a misanthrope in, in that respect, uh, just expecting the absolute worst from people during that time and because of my own moral compass and how I believe that people should behave and be open to talking to one another about sensitive issues and being able to communicate without hate and immediate bias and dehumanizing one another um, but I, I didn't foresee that happening and um, so my channel ultimately became the moral misanthrope that was who I decided I was. Um, but it, even as a misanthrope, I wanted to bring entertainment and just smiles, uh, anything to, to lighten the political and social atmosphere of this country and uh, the world even. Now, now that we've got that information out there and you know a little bit about me and my backstory and my beliefs and whatnot, um, I don't like Joe Biden. I don't like the Biden administration. There's maybe a couple people, not Kamala, in the in, in the administration that get a pass from me. Um, but majority as, as a whole, uh, in government, the Democratic Party, as a governmental body, um, no. But I'm also going to say the same thing about the Republican Party. Uh, I. Again, I'm not affiliated with either one. So this is not, absolutely not, do not take this as some kind of biased, uh, anti-right, like super, like hit piece. That's not what I'm doing. I am simply correcting an issue that I see as being potentially dangerous. Um, so yeah, uh, I get, I get suggested YouTubers who are on the right and, you know, pro-gun or whatever. Um, one of those has been uh, a channel that goes by the moniker of Heavy Duty Country. Uh, I can't remember the, the man's real name. Um, I, I don't even know if I ever knew it. Um, but, you know, every now and again, he'll have some kind of clickbaity title that will catch my attention or I'll see something in the thumbnail about a trending like gun incident 
or or you know some kind of self defense thing that that's causing a lot of controversy and I I'll, I'll be interested to see the perspective of someone on that side of the aisle in relation to you know the the wh whatever the the subject is or if it's like about a new gun law or something of that nature I like to hear all sides you know what I mean and I you know I try to go in with an open mind and with critical thinking um well so you know I I there there are certain things I, I haven't watched a lot of his videos but I've seen a few and whereas I, I know on 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 several occasions he, he, has, he has said that he doesn't have anything against anybody for being you know whatever like their lifestyle or uh, you know, he doesn't have anything against gay people or minorities or he's not racist or, you know, bigot or anything like that. Although he does in my, although, uh, there have been a few videos where I have seen him basically refer to anyone that is a member of the LGBTQ plus committee or that just isn't a, you know, strong masculine alpha male type as a fairy, um, it, it, it it comes off a, a, a little bigoted, a lot bigoted. It it just it sounds it sounds gross and like eighth grade bully mentality, which you know of course I, I I don't agree with that. But I don't I don't know the man personally. I don't know if this is just a character he portrays online or if he really really is. You know, just I I I, I don't know. I don't want to speculate. I don't want to put any accusations on him. Um, I'm just, um, I, and I'm not sending any, any hate or asking anyone. I'm not trying to incite anything towards him or his channel. Um, you know, he's obviously a, a pretty successful content creator, much more so than myself. Uh, he has managed to amass almost 700,000 subscribers, which is far more than I've done in the time I've been on YouTube. But, um, it, it, that's kind of the point is that's that's not a number to be scoffed at you know that that's i mean in comparison to the number of the people in the united states the millions the 300 and some odd million or more um you know it's not it's not massive but it's it's still not a small number it's that's that's a pretty substantial amount of influence um and that's and, and he has a very specific follower base and that's the thing. I guess that's who I'm. I'm mainly talking to on this is, uh, you know, he he recently put out. A, oh, so let, hold on. I I jumped. I jumped ahead too much. Um, although I don't agree with some of the way that he refers to people that he talks about. Um, I did respect. The fact that as a creator, he was looking out for his audience and had transparency and honesty and was opening to listen, open to listening to them. Like with the whole USCCA debacle where someone had commented and said that there was, um, you know, some fine print and something about the coverage and stuff. And as a firearm owner and someone who does have, um, you know, legal representation and insurance and all that stuff i thought it was awesome that uh he listened to that viewer and because he had been promoting uscca very heavily and um you know he retracted that and he broke off his uh, sponsorship or whatever with them and uh, issued an apology to his subscribers which um i thought was cool because i believe everybody has the right to be able to defend themselves, to protect their homes, to protect their families, to own firearms. Everyone should have legal defense in the off chance and very unfortunate situation of uh, having to use a firearm in self-defense. And, uh, you know, I, I respected that particular aspect. So I believed um, that, you know, generally that's who he was as a person as far as transparency was concerned. I was under the impression that that's just the the kind of man that you know he is that he would never want to intentionally deceive his audience. Well, after the his 
a video he recently posted, I am second guessing that. I am questioning um, his integrity as far as that is concerned uh, in relation to his viewership. And again, this is alleged and I don't know the man and I don't know his motives, but I can only speculate on how it appears given the knowledge that I have and what I'm seeing. So again, I'm asking you to go, go into everything I'm about to say with an open mind and good faith and use critical thinking. We're all, we're all adults. So in his video, he starts off by saying, without any context, what do you think is going on here? Without context, I want you to comment what you think of this conversation. So what that says, to, and he proceeds to play a clip that was taken from CNN. Could a president order SEAL Team 6 to assassinate a political rival? That's an official act in order to SEAL Team 6. What? Now, the fact that he prefaced it with, without any context, what do you think is going on here? So immediately, how that comes across, in my opinion, is I'm taking the stance um, of immediately absolving myself of any responsibility if anything negative comes out of this video. If any of my viewers do anything or if anybody comes after me from a legal standpoint for anything I've said, I'm absolved because I, I said this was taken out of context and I asked what people's opinions were. That's how it seems it was being framed. So immediately following the clip, he paints this picture that this judge is on this secret recorded phone call with Trump's lawyer and she's basically posing this vague threat by asking if it's legal for Biden to order SEAL Team 6 to execute Trump, to assassinate Trump. That's the the way this is painted. If Biden ordered SEAL Team 6 to take out President Trump, do you think the citizens would be like, oh, it's cool, dude. He's got absolute immunity. So, no, it's fine. We're in a really weird time in America right now. Things are happening that have no business even being brought up. The fact that this was even a conversation between a judge and a lawyer is outrageous. And he's like, who would do that, you know? And then he gets into this whole uh, thing about, you know, no one should have immunity. You know, they're, they're, they're setting this up and like for, for this whole like presidential immunity thing. And he's like, I think anybody should be held to the same standards, blah, blah, blah. I don't believe in that. But um, this all stemmed from something called presidential immunity, which I don't buy into. I don't believe in it. I think every person in this country should be held to the same standard as everyone else, whether you're a president or a homeless person. Your morality, the laws, whatever else it is, it doesn't change just because you have a higher status or what you think is a higher status. So let me, let me put this into the context, the context that seems as though seems to me personally as though it was intentionally taken out of context because given the source where it came from if you watch I'm going to play that clip as well you will see uh, it, it's clear the context it is it is blatantly explained like there's no it, it you don't have to sit there for a minute and try to figure out what they're saying it's very easy. Anyone with the slightest bit of intelligence can tell what is going on in this clip. It says so at the top of the clip where it came from. Let's yeah. play it because it's so, it's such a poignant moment that Judge Florence Pan asked of this very court. She had a litany of things, including selling military secrets, selling pardons, and ending with this huge hypothetical. Listen to this. Could a president order SEAL Team 6 to assassinate a political rival? That's an official act in order to SEAL Team 6. He, he would have to be and would speedily be, you know, uh, uh, impeached and convicted before the criminal but prosecution. If you weren't, but if you weren't, there would be no criminal prosecution, no criminal liability for that. 
Chief Justice's opinion in Marbury against Madison and uh, uh, and our constitutional tradition and the plain language of the impeachment judgment clause all clearly presuppose that what the founders were concerned about was not. I asked you a yes no yes or no question. Could a president who ordered SEAL Team Six to assassinate a political rival who was not impeached would he be subject to criminal prosecution? If he were impeached and convicted first, and so, so your answer is. Is, no. is my answer is qualified yes I mean, I'm, we all, at that point, we all in the room kind of sat back for a second because first of all, to make a concession of any kind, it's, it's major. But when you hear that, trying to go through the hypotheticals, trying to follow that thread of common sense and logic, what struck you about that moment where he essentially has a qualified yes that a president could actually order an assassination and if he's not impeached or convicted, immune? So the context is that this is from Trump's immunity hearing and Trump's lawyer, Trump's attorney, Trump's, Trump's legal team is pushing for immunity for Trump. This isn't about Biden. And I'm not, I'm not for either, I'm not, this isn't a, a right versus left thing. This is just drop test. <laughs> Absolutely fine. Sig P365. All right, so a uh, quick little interruption. Um, during the process of editing my video and also going back and re-watching his video a couple times like while I'm editing my video, just making sure I've got all my ducks in a row and all my facts straight and, uh, you know, everything. In the interest of full transparency and everything, uh, I did leave out what could be a very important fact. He did state in his video, he showed a tweet and mentioned that, you know, some user on Twitter suggested that, you know, Biden, maybe Biden should order SEAL Team 6 to assassinate Trump. That user either, A, took the, uh, the quote from the immunity hearing out of context as well and misunderstood it, or B, was doubling down on what the judge was doing and illustrating the absurdity of giving a president uh, immunity and how far that would stretch. And, and they were saying, hey, maybe Biden should do that. Um, you know, uh, again, th this is all speculation, but, but, you know, gi giving the benefit of the doubt, I could maybe see how in, in the heat of the moment, seeing a tweet like that, being a supporter of Trump may be, you know, uh, um, emotions ran high for a minute. The, the, the anger and the passion was there and it, it made the situation a little more easily misconstrued. Like perhaps he genuinely misunderstood uh, the, the context I don't think that's the case personally. I could be wrong, um, but you know, may, maybe, maybe. I just wanted to be 100% transparent, not leave anything out, and uh, you know, provide other context that he provided in his video that maybe led to the, you know, miscommunication breakdown. We'll call it. But yeah, so th this isn't this isn't a a right versus left. I, I'm not. I'm just trying to, to to put in in context, put the facts there for you to be able to see for yourself without any sort of manipulation or anything of of that nature. Uh, I, I want y'all to understand that sometimes people you enjoy watching or look up to or respect or view as being knowledgeable or any anything of that nature on the internet aren't always going to be telling you the truth it's not always going to be that way sometimes i'm, I'm i'll leave it at that I'll, I'll be respectful and leave it at that but so you know, the, again, like I was saying, this isn't this isn't about about sides. This is this is about the truth. That was taken from Trump's immunity hearing. That that was recorded in the courtroom. You can listen to the tone 
of the judge talking to the attorney. You can listen to the response from the attorney when you hear how she is talking fast and you know the, the way she's trying to offer an explanation and the judge with dominance in her tone says I asked a yes or no question. She She's asking a hypothetical illustrating the absurdity of the fact that Trump's defense team is trying to say that he should be able to cross there are no lines that he shouldn't be able to cross that that he should have immunity they're trying to get him off of all of his criminal you know allegations or whatever uh you know that's that's where that's what that clip is that's what the, the whole that's the context this wasn't this wasn't about uh, you know, can Biden get away with having Trump assassinated? No. It was a hypothetical question proposed by a judge during a hearing where they're trying to get someone who has committed crimes against the United States off of those crimes. It's that simple. You know, I, I don't like Biden any more than any of you do. I don't like Trump either, though. You know? And, uh, you know, y you guys might love him. You know, and so be it. I, I know I can't change your mind about him, you know, but it, it doesn't it doesn't cover up the truth. Like you're whether you like the man or not, it doesn't cover up the truth. You know, it, it, this I, I read the com a lot of the comments on the video, and it, it went exactly how I thought it was going to. A lot of people saw it as exactly how, you know, this guy was framing it to make it look like, you know, it was a, a, a the judge was trying to threaten the attorney. That's the thing. It, oh, man. So if, let me, let me ask you, if, if this was a secret recorded phone call, why, and, and, and the judge was in on an assassination attempt, why? Why would they call the attorney of the person who was the target and basically say that he is a target and that there's a hit on him, like vaguely threatening that in the form of a question, could the, the other uh, you know, political opponent get away with that legally? All that's going to do is say, hey, uh, ramp up your security, keep him out of sight. Like, why would it, that's like showing your whole hand in a poker game? It doesn't make sense, but that's because it, it, it's not real. That's not what happened. So, I've already given you the context. You can, I'm going to link the original video, the, the source, and you can go and watch it for yourself and you know, make your own mind up. But you know, the truth is the truth. Either way, we need to be more independent thinking and not just take everything on the internet at face value. We need to be willing to do some research. We need to be willing to listen to things from the other side that we may, may not necessarily agree with and like, you know, make an attempt to understand the perspectives and the whys. We need to be willing to, to go into things open-minded on nuanced topics and see that there, that there may be multiple angles at, at which something has to be viewed and, and understood and that there may not be a clear resolution on all topics and that there are things that are going to take time, but they're not going to get resolved without the willingness to, to work together despite our differences. I know you all love the Second Amendment, and I do too, but that Second Amendment ultimately protects that First Amendment, and that First Amendment is our freedom of speech and freedom of press, and, and you know, you know, the, the pursuit of life, love, happiness, liberty, you know, whatever the saying is, um, you know, I believe everybody should have that opportunity. No, but the thing, the thing is, you know, uh, I, I know a lot of you are on the religious side. You know, you're, you're Christians, and I respect your right to believe in what you believe. And 
I want you to also understand that your beliefs do say love thy neighbor and not to judge others. And I believe if your God was here, if, if there was a second coming as the Bible foretells, and Jesus came down here and saw the way that like humanity was behaving towards one another, I'm not sure any of us would make it if we're being 100% honest. I think everybody's got some skeletons and everybody's got some biases. Everybody's got some prejudices and hate in one way, shape, or form. And we need to work on that collectively. We need to try to try to work together and try to understand each other and be willing to talk to one another. And, you know, that's that that's the point. I wanted to clear up that misinformation because stuff of that nature. That's the kind of thing that furthers the divide in this country and pits us against one another rather than pushing us closer to working together. You know, when we when we perpetrate false narratives based on our political biases, it creates violence, it creates hate, and it does nothing to strengthen us as a nation. It cripples us and makes us vulnerable. I hope you all will take that into consideration and uh, you know that we will all do better moving forward. Again, if you're new here, thank you for watching. Thank you for giving me your time. Um, I, I hope I didn't offend you too much. Um, and hopefully you'll stick around for future videos because there's going to be more like this, sadly. But uh, it, it's time for me to stop focusing on just being entertaining and you know, get into real life some because that's where we're at now. I mean, I'm going to keep trying to entertain y'all. We got we got other channels that we're going to be doing that with, but, you know, uh, go check out Omen Butter. Uh, if you'd like, feel free to subscribe because it is free and I will be bringing you some more uh, controversial content. But for now, uh, I'm going to call it at that and just thank you again. Uh, you all are wonderful. Appreciate your support. Love you. Gotta go. You people are getting to